But no. where were you parked? Yeah, I'll show you. Just show me right here. You, oh, I, all right, MIB. Join the fight against corruption on the U.S. Corrupt Cops YouTube channel. Watch the latest video on corrupt cops arrest man for asking for directions and show solidarity. Subscribe, like, and share to spread this important message. On November 2nd, 2021, Travis Hines, a globetrotting YouTuber and avid urban camper, ventured into Bethany, Missouri City Hall seeking information on the local parking conditions. Can I help you? Well, yeah, I'm having difficulty with the parking. Um, what do you mean, mean what, the parking? Where's the sections for the two hours? Because uh, I'm a little confused. Uh, there's, I was going to choose some spots around the library. I want to go to the library. But there's this, there's these two-hour parking spots, and does anybody ever have problems with parking around here? No. Oh, okay. Well, I, I feel very unique in that matter because I'm, I'm really miss. I'm really confused. Can you direct me to the person I need to talk to about the parking situation? Well, if you have a problem with the yep. parking situation. Yeah, because I don't know. Cause I'm parked right in front of City Hall. I can tell you. Is that a problem with the two-hour parking in front of City Hall? I don't know where you keep coming up with this two-hour parking. There's a, there's, I saw two signs. Do you need, do you need me to show you a picture of that? No. That got, are you pranking me right now, or are, are you really serious? I don't I'm think. I don't. I get the impression you you don't realize how bad the like the streets are and the parking is. Then you're 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 not you're not uh, really uh, under you're not really. Mr. Hines raised his concerns regarding two parking signs close to the library. Following a few minutes of discussion, a City Hall staff member contacted the Harrison County Sheriff's Office to help address the situation. I mean, the parking's a lot better um, up north in those cities that I've been to. I guess I got called, um, or you guys are just here for me? Yeah, we're here for you. Okay, all right. Um, I'm not you want to direct? if he's pranking me, if he's pulling my leg, or if there's something wrong. Um, he's very concerned about the parking, and we're gonna get a We've got a GoPro on our chest, so we're obviously hey, recording. Hey, why don't you have a seat right here? A seat? Yeah. What's we're it? We're gonna go talk to them in the back and find out what's going on. All right. Well, what just is that? that? All right, yeah, because you didn't, you didn't hear the conversation, no, so. No, but we'll talk to you too, so. Well, I'm the one that they called the cops on. I guess they buzz buzz the cops on, and I, was, I parked right out here, and I was asking about the parking situation. Apparently, we can uh, park across the street. Because <clears throat> I mean, right you you know about the two-hour signs, right? The two-hour limits. Are you blocking me from exiting? Is I'm trying that... to figure out why I'm being called. Okay, well, I, I guess you want to talk to it. Yeah, all right, fine. You want to talk to the. Have a seat for me. What's the problem? What's the crime? I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Have a well, seat I'm, I've, I've been sitting in my car for all morning. I just want to. Okay. So, I mean, I'll move over if you're afraid I'm going to escape. I mean, am I being detained? Officer Harris stopped Mr. Hines from leaving a building and told him to sit down, even though he insisted he wasn't being detained. The legal issue here involves the Fourth Amendment, which protects people from unreasonable searches and seizures by law enforcement. Previous Supreme Court cases such as Terry v. Ohio and California v. Hodari D. have established that not every encounter with the police qualifies as a seizure. The crucial factor is whether a reasonable person would feel free to leave in the given circumstances. Despite Officer Harris's denial, his actions, physically blocking Mr. Hines and telling him to sit down, would likely be interpreted as a show of authority making it reasonable for Mr. Hines to believe he couldn't leave. As a result, a court might conclude that Mr. Hines was, indeed, seized under the Fourth Amendment, despite Officer Harris's claim to the contrary. What's the, yeah, these guys, these guys talk to him. What's the deal? We're just trying to figure out what your concern is. Okay, uh, so she gave her side, and you got a full scope of what she said. No, I'm asking you what your concern is. Why are you no, are you satisfied with her story, I guess? It's... I guess, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I, so, so you understand where, she, where she's coming from, and I'm, my side is I'm, I'm interested in finding a good parking spot. Okay, there's two lots right here. If you're looking for all square Yeah, and, and if we could walk out there, I mean, I'll show you where I'm parked. What? Where were you parked? Yeah, I'll show you. Just show me right here. 
You, oh, I, or am I being detained for a crime? We're trying to figure out what's well, going on. Well, then it'd probably be easier to like point from the you know closer area to this parking where I'm at and where I can park uh, outside. You guys prefer to talk inside? Yeah, yeah. it's outside. Oh, it's because, okay, well, that's reasonable. We're not sure what your concern is. is what this is a two-hour parking. I'll get a okay. ticket for two-hour parking. You yeah, know what? I'll get a ticket for two-hour parking. Okay, so I guess I didn't ask the question directly. Will I get a, par a ticket for... Parking longer than two hours, the answer is no. Okay, well then that settles it. All right. Do you have a driver's what, license on your what, what's Driver's license? What is it? So I can identify you. Make sure you don't have any warrants. Well, I mean, first we have to establish a crime. No, I don't. Yeah. That's, Making that's, contact with you is good enough. I've yeah, that's here. fine. And I've you can make contact. Here. Hey, I've been called hmm? here to Harris? make contact with you. Okay. Yes, Officer Harris. Well, who, you who's the caller? failing. They are. Well, no, they were the buzzer. They, they buzzed, they right? You are failing to identify yourself to me and not give me your ID. Yeah. I will take you to jail. If you want a crime. Officer Harris says he can ask people to identify themselves when he approaches them. However, the law generally requires individuals to give their ID only if the officer has a good reason to suspect criminal activity or if there's a specific law in the state saying so. Some states have laws allowing officers to arrest those who refuse to give their ID. For example, Missouri has such a law, but it doesn't force people to comply with an officer's ID request. It's important to note that in certain cases, just a 911 call may be enough to detain and identify someone in states where showing ID upon an officer's request is required with reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. The Supreme Court confirmed this in the 2014 case of Navarrete versus California stating that information from a 911 call can create reasonable suspicion if the call is reliable enough for the officer to trust the information. Oh, you want to you want to you want to charge me with a crime? No, we want to identify yourself. We want to identify you. Well, I don't that's, I got I'm sorry, but I have to enforce my 4th Amendment rights. So, okay. well, I don't understand you have the right to if you think yourself to if you think your if you think your prosecutor is going to uh, back you up on that. They want to follow through on this charge. Okay. Um, we'll see how those arguments go. Yeah. They tend not to go too well in your favor. Okay. Just doing this. Well, what you, a charge of what? Do you not want to give me your driver's license? Well, do you want to give me your driver's license? I don't have to give you my driver's well, license. Well, what's I don't understand why you can't because give I'm me. I'm making contact <clears throat> with you. I'm making contact with you. I'm going to run and to these sure two. No warrants. Are you are you asking ID sir, for your own curiosity no, we're, we're or gonna, for the the betterment of the? We were called up here because there was someone that was irate. Irate, okay. Hall. The reason we're asking for your ID is because a crime has been committed. We're not oh. trying to charge you with one. Well, if you think you want to follow through on charging me with a crime, I mean, see what your prosecutor, so, your city prosecutor would want to, you know, go through. So here's the question is, why don't you identify yourself? We'll all move on. Well, why don't we have a, why don't we understand, establish the, the crime mm -hmm. and we got a fourth amendment here. We got to, we got to break, we got to get through here. All right. And I mean, there's steps to take with that. If, if you want to, if you want to fully charge me with the crime, then I guess you'll have to arrest me, you know, and, and uh, follow through on that. In this situation, the sheriff's office is claiming that Mr. Hines committed a crime because of his supposedly irate behavior, but they haven't specified exactly what crime he's accused of. The important legal question is whether Mr. Hines actually broke any laws in Missouri. Even though being irate could be a problem in certain cases, it doesn't seem like he violated any specific Missouri laws here. The statutes related to disturbing the peace and harassment don't seem to apply because he didn't make loud noises, use offensive language, make threats, or get into a physical fight. There's also no evidence that he intentionally caused emotional distress. Plus, even if he did express his concerns in a way that caused some distress, he's protected by the First Amendment when it comes to complaining about the parking situation. So based on the information given, it looks like the accusations against Mr. Hines may not have a legal foundation. If that's what you, if you think that's what uh, your city prosecutor is going to uh, support you on, so, I mean, I, I, this is a contact thing. I just ask it about parking. Mm -hmm. This would be laughed out of court, Harris. Yeah. But if you want to follow through, yeah. are you failing to give me your? ID? Are you failing to give me your ID? Are you failing to give me your ID? Okay, I'm willing to exchange Face the wall. IDs. Face the wall. All right. Put your phone down. All right. Put your phone down. Mr. Hines refused to show his ID to Officer Harris, got arrested for second-degree harassment and peace disturbance, 
but the charges were later dropped. The Bethany officers messed up a simple situation, didn't understand Missouri's ID laws, and turned it into an unnecessary arrest. Instead of helping, they accused Mr. Hines without cause. Despite living a nomadic lifestyle, Mr. Hines handled it well, staying respectful while questioning the officers. He often deals with law enforcement due to his choice of parking in public lots, but consistently defends his rights without breaking the law. It's unclear if he'll take legal action. Let's make a difference together. Subscribe, like, and share the video on the U.S. Corrupt Cops YouTube channel to spread the message about corruption within law enforcement. We can bring about change by enhancing community awareness and pushing back against unethical behavior. Be part of our collective voice to defend justice and safety.